everything you think you know about dinosaurs is hilariously wrong those scaly green monsters from your childhood yeah pure fiction the truth is way more mind-blowing dinosaurs had colorful feathers many couldn't hurt you if they tried and that chicken sandwich you ate for lunch yeah that was a dinosaur let's start with the biggest lie you've been told your entire life that dinosaurs are extinct every textbook says dinosaurs died out 66 million years ago when that giant asteroid hit earth right but here's the mind-blowing truth dinosaurs are everywhere you probably saw at least 10 of them today that's because birds aren't just related to dinosaurs they are dinosaurs scientists have found that birds share specific skeletal features with dinosaur fossils including that hole in the hip socket that defines all dinosaurs when scientists tested protein sequences from t-rex bones they found that t-rex was more closely related to chickens than to alligators so that pigeon pooping on your car dinosaur that chicken nugget you had for lunch dinosaur nugget the only difference is that modern birds are the small flying dinosaurs that survived when their bigger cousins got wiped out every time you see a bird you're literally watching a living dinosaur but wait what about all those other prehistoric creatures you know the ones with the weird sailing backs or the flying reptiles or those swimming monsters here's where toys and movies really mess up not everything big prehistoric and scary was a dinosaur take the metrodon that sailback creature everyone puts in dinosaur toy sets it lived millions of years before dinosaurs even existed actually more closely related to mammals like us than to any dinosaur those flying pterosaurs from jurassic park they're flying reptiles that evolved separately and those giant sea monsters creatures like mosasaurs and plesiosaurs were marine reptiles totally different from dinosaurs true dinosaurs were land animals with specific features like upright legs under their bodies it's like calling a whale a fish just because it swims completely different animals now if you're shocked that chickens are dinosaurs wait and see what t-rex actually looked like with its fabulous feather coat you remember i was talking about those green scaly dinosaurs that every movie and toy has yeah that's about as accurate as giving a penguin shark teeth the truth about what dinosaurs actually looked like might be the biggest plot twist in science history since the 1990s paleontologists have discovered hundreds of dinosaur fossils with clear impressions of feathers especially in china these weren't just a few weird fluffy dinosaurs either we're talking about a huge number of species particularly among the theropods which includes t-rex and velociraptor take utyrannus a relative of the t-rex this 30-foot predator was completely covered in feathers like a massive terrifying chicken even smaller dinosaurs like cineropteryx had a coat of fuzzy proto feathers kind of like dinosaur down scientists think these feathers first evolved for insulation or showing off to potential mates way before birds used them for flying and it wasn't just small dinosaurs or meat eaters either we found evidence of feather-like structures on plant eaters like Cetacosaurus, too so next time you see a scaly velociraptor in a movie just know you're actually looking at a naked dinosaur it would be like showing humans without skin technically part of our anatomy but not how we're supposed to look but wait it gets even better those dull gray and green dinosaurs you grew up with pure imagination scientists can actually tell what color dinosaurs were by examining microscopic structures called melanosomes and fossil feathers these tiny color producing capsules survived for millions of years thanks to this discovery we know that the mycoraptor had iridescent black feathers that shimmered like a crow's Ankinoris had a striking pattern of black white and reddish brown feathers cynosopteryx had a striped tail and a raccoon like mask some dinosaurs even had counter shading darker on top lighter underneath just like modern animals used for camouflage the dinosaur world wasn't just feathery it was a rainbow explosion of color t-rex might have had bright patches for display or patterns for camouflage the real prehistoric world looked more like a bird sanctuary than the drab reptile house we've been imagining in jurassic park hollywood seriously needs to update its graphics department but now that you're picturing t-rex as a giant rainbow chicken let's shatter another myth about how these creatures actually moved you know those old school museum displays of dinosaurs dragging their tails on the ground total garbage let's talk dinosaur tails for decades artists and museums showed dinosaurs with their massive tails dragging on the ground like giant lizards it seemed to make sense those tails were huge but when scientists studied fossil trackways which are actual dinosaur footprints preserved in stone they noticed something weird there were no tail drag marks none zero in thousands of dinosaur tracks discovered worldwide we don't see evidence of tails dragging what we do see are footprints from animals balanced perfectly on their legs it's because dinosaurs actually held their tails straight out behind them as a counterbalance to their heavy bodies and heads 
Think about it like a seesaw. If you've got a heavy head up front, you need weight in the back to balance. Dinosaurs use their muscular tails as natural balance beams, keeping them horizontal and off the ground. This made them way more agile and efficient when moving. And speaking of wrong moves, let's talk about T-Rex's ridiculous kangaroo pose. Early museum displays showed T-Rex standing almost upright, with its tail on the ground almost like a third leg. Some even put it in a Godzilla-like posture. This made for scary movie monsters, but terrible science. Modern studies of T-Rex skeletons show its spine was meant to be horizontal, not vertical. The backbone, hip structure, and skull all line up in a way that only works if the dinosaur is balanced horizontally over its legs, with the tail extending straight back. Forcing a T-Rex into that upright posture would be like making you walk around with your spine bent 90 degrees. Painful and impossible. The real T-Rex walked with its body parallel to the ground, more like a giant bird than a kangaroo or a lizard. This position was much more stable and efficient for a predator weighing several tons. Think of it this way. T-Rex wasn't some slow tail dragging monster. It was a perfectly balanced killing machine with a body designed for efficient movement. Those old museum displays weren't just wrong, they were physically impossible. If Hollywood messed up something as basic as how dinosaurs stood, imagine what they got wrong about T-Rex's senses and hunting. So remember that scene in Jurassic park where they say don't move t-rex can't see if you don't move that might be the biggest lie hollywood ever told about dinosaurs if you actually tried the standstill trick with a real t-rex you'd become dino dinner faster than you can say clever girl here's why t-rex had some of the best vision in the dinosaur world scientists studying t-rex skulls found it had massive eye sockets the size of grapefruits those huge eyes weren't just for show they gave t-rex incredible vision that would put your eyesight to shame t-rex had forward-facing eyes like a hawk giving it excellent depth perception for judging distances. Pretty important when you're trying to chomp moving prey. But this is where it gets interesting. Studies suggest T-Rex's visual acuity was up to 13 times better than humans. That means it could distinguish objects with incredible precision, possibly even better than modern eagles and hawks. It could accurately judge exactly how far away you were while standing perfectly still. So the next time someone tells you to stand still around a T-Rex, remember, that's like trying to hide from an eagle by freezing in an open field. Good luck with that strategy. But that's not the only T-Rex myth that science has crushed. Some paleontologists once suggested that T-Rex was just a giant scavenger, too slow and clumsy to hunt live prey. They claimed it just bullied smaller predators away from their kills, like a prehistoric vulture with attitude. The evidence completely destroys this idea. T-Rex had a bone-crushing bite force powerful enough to shatter the bones of its prey. That's not an adaptation you need for eating already dead animals. Even more convincing, scientists have found healed T-Rex bite marks on Triceratops and Edmontosaurus bones, which is absolute proof that the T-Rex hunted live animals. T-Rex was the ultimate apex predator of its time, like modern lions or wolves. It probably scavenged when convenient. Hey, like free food is free food. Are you going to give it up? But make no mistake, it was a killer, not just a cleanup crew. But here's what most people miss about it. T-Rex was a super powerful predator with eagle vision. But what you've heard about how fast it could run will make your jaw drop. Remember that Jurassic Park scene with the Jeep chase? It's time for a reality check on T-Rex speed. So how fast could T-Rex actually run? The answer isn't as simple as slow or fast. For years, scientists argued about this. Some said a creature so massive could barely manage a quick walk while others claimed it could sprint like a giant terrifying ostrich. The truth is somewhere in the middle. T-Rex wasn't a slowpoke, but it definitely wasn't chasing down jeeps at highway speeds either. Modern studies looking at leg bones, muscle attachments, and body weight suggest T-Rex could reach speeds between 10 to 25 miles per hour. Think somewhere between a jogging human and a running elephant. That's pretty fast to catch prey like triceratops or duck-billed dinosaurs, which weren't exactly speed demons themselves. And baby T-Rexes? They were built lighter and probably much faster than the adults. So could you outrun a T-Rex? Maybe if you're a serious athlete. The average person? Not a chance. It would catch you before you could even finish screaming. Now, let's talk about another bizarre dinosaur movement myth, the bunny hands problem. Take a look at most dinosaur toys, pictures and books, and even museum displays, and you'll see carnivorous dinosaurs with their hands facing palms down, like they're ready to push their triceps in the gym. Scientists call this the broken wrist pose because it's completely impossible. Here's the deal. Therapod dinosaurs physically couldn't rotate their wrists that way. Their anatomy prevented it. Forcing a T-Rex hand into that position would be like twisting your arm until something snaps. Instead, their hands naturally face each other, palms inward, like they were about to clap. Think of it as a permanent give me a high five position. This makes sense for grabbing prey, not pushing things around. Every time you see a dinosaur toy with downward facing palms, that dinosaur has dislocated wrists. Ouch. This might seem like a small detail, but it completely changes how we understand dinosaur behavior. Those mighty arms weren't for pushing. 
They were for grabbing and holding. But here's what most people miss. The dinosaur lies get even weirder when we look at bizarre myths about what specific dinosaurs could actually do with their fancy headgear. Have you ever seen those giant lawn neck dinosaurs like Brachiosaurus with nostrils on top of their heads? That bizarre feature shows up in books, movies, and museum displays, but it's completely made up. For decades, scientists thought sauropods had their nostrils on top of their heads because that's where the large hole is in their skull. Early paleontologists even suggested they use them like snorkels when hanging out in deep water. But modern research tells a totally different story. When scientists studied the inside of sauropod skulls, they found tiny marks where blood vessels and nerves attached. These marks are always near the front of the snout, not on top of the head. Plus, almost every animal alive today, from birds to crocodiles, has its fleshy nostrils at the front of the face, regardless of where the bone opening is. The large opening on top wasn't a nostril at all. It was just the beginning of a bigger nasal cavity that might have helped with cooling their massive bodies or making sounds. Real sauropods have their nostrils right at the front of their face, just like we do. And speaking of bizarre head features, let's talk about a parasaur, the duck-billed dinosaur with a huge curved tube on its head. Some truly wild theories suggest it used that crest as a snorkel for breathing underwater. Others, including one creationist scientist, actually proposed it could breathe fire like a biblical dragon. Yeah, both ideas are hilariously wrong. For starters, the tube is completely closed at the end, so it'd be the worst snorkel ever. And as for fire breathing, yeah, there's zero evidence of any mechanism that could produce flames. No animal alive today can breathe fire, and nothing in the parasaur's skull suggests it could either. The truth is much cooler, actually. The crest contained long, winding nasal passages that worked like a natural trumpet or trombone. Scientists who created computer models of the crest found it could produce deep, resonating sounds, perfect for communicating across long distances or attracting mates. Imagine a whole herd of these dinosaurs making low, booming calls that echo miles. The crest was basically a built-in music instrument and a fancy billboard advertising, hey, check me out, to potential mates. Now, if you think dinosaur nose myths are weird, wait till you hear how wrong we've been about where and how these massive creatures actually live. So those massive long-necked dinosaurs were too heavy to walk on land, right? That's why old books always showed brontosaurus and friends hanging out in lakes and swamps using water to support their enormous weight. Well, spoiler alert, completely wrong. This idea was super popular in the early days of paleontology. Scientists looked at those giant sauropods weighing up to 70 tons and thought, no way these beasts could support themselves on land. Some even thought the high nostril position, which we just debunked, was like a built-in snorkel. And this is all part of the same theory. But actual evidence tells the sauropods were fully land-dwelling creatures. Their legs were arranged in sturdy, column-like structures similar to modern elephants, perfectly designed for supporting massive weights on solid ground. Their feet had special pad structures that worked like built-in shock absorbers, just like elephant feet today. The most convincing proof comes from fossil trackways, preserved footprints that show sauropods walking on dry land, not swimming or floating. These giants definitely visited water to drink or cool off, but they didn't need it to stay afloat. They were basically the prehistoric equivalent of elephants, huge, but perfectly adapted for life on land. The whole too heavy for land myth is like saying elephants would collapse under their own weight without swimming pools. Speaking of dinosaurs and water, let's talk about Spinosaurus, the sailback predator that's been rewritten more times than a Hollywood script. Recent discoveries had some scientists claiming Spinosaurus was basically a dinosaur crocodile, actively chasing prey underwater like an Olympic sweater. Evidence seemed impressive. Dense bones like penguin bones, a paddle-like tail, crocodile-like teeth, and a body shape unlike other dinosaurs. Some declared it the first fully aquatic dinosaur, but not so fast. New research shows Spinosaurus would have been a terrible swimmer if it only lived in water. Its massive sail would have created huge drag underwater, making it unstable and slow. Its tail can generate enough power for chasing fish, and its lungs would have made it too buoyant to easily dive. In reality, Spinosaurus is more like a giant heron or a bear fishing at a riverbank, a waiting predator that hunted from the shoreline, occasionally swimming in at the surface, but not diving to chase prey underwater. Still incredibly specialized for a dinosaur, or just not the underwater pursuit machine some claimed. So yes, it was deadly in the water, but only on the shore. But that brings me to another myth. Do you think dinosaurs were just mindless eating machines? Well, the truth about dinosaur intelligence and parenting skills would completely change how you see these ancient animals. We still use the word dinosaur as an insult for something outdated or stupid. But calling someone a dinosaur because they're dumb, science says that's actually pretty stupid itself. For decades, people thought dinosaurs were just giant lizards with walnut-sized brains. 
slow, dumb, and doomed to extinction because they couldn't adapt. This myth partially came from creatures like Stegosaurus, which had a brain roughly the size of a dog's despite weighing as much as a bus. But dinosaur intelligence varied enormously. Some, particularly smaller theropods like Troodontids and Velociraptors, had relatively large brains compared to their body size. Their brain-to-body ratio approaches that of modern birds, which we know are pretty smart. Crows can solve puzzles, mockingbirds remember human faces for years, and parrots understand basic language. This is where it gets interesting though. Scientists have also found evidence of complex dinosaur behaviors, counting in packs and living in herds with social structures. These aren't things stupid animals typically do. Now, were dinosaurs solving calculus problems or building dinosaur cities? No, but they weren't mindless eating machines either. They successfully dominated Earth for over 150 million years. That's about 149.9 million years longer than humans have existed. You don't rule the planet that long by being stupid. Speaking of smart behaviors, let's talk dinosaur parenting. Movies often show dinosaurs laying eggs and abandoning them, but that's another major myth. In Montana, scientists discovered a nesting group of duck-billed dinosaurs they named Myasaura, which literally means good mother lizard. These nests contain eggs, babies, and juveniles of different ages. The worn down teeth in the babies suggest parents were bringing food to the nest, which is basically like dinosaur DoorDash. Even more amazing was the discovery of dinosaurs that died while sitting on their nests. Several oviraptor fossils have been found in brooding position, literally giving their lives to protect their eggs from sandstorms or predators. Scientists have discovered extensive nesting colonies showing that many dinosaurs returned to the same nesting sites year after year, just like modern birds. Some may have even nested in groups for protection, basically creating a prehistoric dinosaur daycare. This sophisticated parental care is light years away from the lay them and leave myth that we've been told. But now let's talk about our last two myths. We all know the story. One day, a giant space rock smashed into Earth and boom, all the dinosaurs died instantly. Simple, right? Well, not exactly. Exactly. The real extinction story is way more complicated and even more terrifying. Yes, a massive asteroid did hit Earth about 66 million years ago, creating the crater we all know in modern day Mexico. But that wasn't the only disaster happening. At the same time, some of the biggest volcanoes ever were erupting in what's now India, spewing out toxic gases and changing the climate even before the asteroid hit. And here's another shocker. The extinction wasn't instant. While the impact itself caused immediate devastation with massive tsunamis, wildfires, and an impact winter where dust basically blocked the sun. Sun. On the other hand, the full extinction process likely took thousands of years. This is where it gets interesting though. You gotta think of it like a domino effect. First, plants couldn't grow without sunlight, then plant eaters starved, then the meat eaters that hunted them died out. The whole food web was collapsed step by step. It was a slow motion apocalypse. And it wasn't just bad luck. Some animal groups survived while others perished. Birds, which are avian dinosaurs, mammals, crocodiles, turtles, and many others made it through. It wasn't random. Certain adaptations helped some animals survive while others perished. Speaking of survival, let's talk about the biggest dinosaur myth created by Hollywood. The idea that we could clone dinosaurs from ancient DNA, like in Jurassic Park. In the movies, scientists find dinosaur blood in mosquitoes trapped in amber, extract the DNA, and use it to clone extinct dinosaurs. It sounds plausible enough that many people believe it could actually happen. The problem? DNA starts breaking down immediately after death. Even under perfect conditions, DNA has a half-life. It breaks into smaller and smaller pieces over time. Scientists estimate that readable DNA sequences are completely gone after about 1 to 1.5 million years max. Dinosaurs went extinct 66 million years ago. That's at least 65 million years too late for viable DNA. So even the mosquitoes and amber wouldn't help. The DNA inside them would have degraded too. And finding a complete dinosaur genome from tiny fragments is mathematically impossible. But recently, we did just clone dire wolves. So never say never. Although they're not a one-to-one -one clone of the dire wolf, and it's also a much more recent animal that went extinct. So that's why they had enough DNA to make it. But who knows in the future what will happen? The closest we'll likely ever get to seeing real dinosaurs is by studying their living descendants, birds. So next time someone tells you Jurassic Park could really happen, just point to the pigeon outside your window and say, that's as close as you're getting to a velociraptor. If you like this video, you wanna learn more about dinosaurs, I invite you to like and subscribe to this channel because we talk a lot about dinosaurs from movies to real science all across the board. If you want more dinosaur myths busted, I suggest you click the video on screen now.